Guess the lock's broken. Better install a new one. This should work. Too easy. What's up everyone? In this video we're going to be adding front-end security and validation to our website with JavaScript, jQuery, HTML, and CSS. In the last video we created the sign-up form with HTML and CSS. By the end of this video we're going to be able to click sign up and we're going to see a border around each invalid input field and an error message for that input. Fill in my first name and click sign up. That input field is now valid and the error message goes away as well as the red border. Over in our Flippy Coins repository, check it out on GitHub, we're going to head over to the app folder, assets, JS folder, and we're going to create a folder here called form. Inside this form folder, we're going to create a global.js file. We're going to code this in such a way where, where we can reuse this JavaScript object over and over again on current forms and forms that we create in the future. Open that up in Sublime Text. Also open up our Views, Templates, Default, HTML. In here, we're going to add our global.js file here to be included on every single page. JS form global.js. That's the file we just created. Now it's included in our default HTML template. Every new page we create going forward will also include our form. Back in our repository here, we're going to create another folder called signup. And then in our signup folder, we're going to create another global JS file. And this is only going to contain stuff specific to the signup page. Open that in Sublime Text as well as opening up the signup HTML head section. This HTML head section only contains stuff specifically for the signup page. In here, we're going to include our signup global JS file. This will be where we have the on click for our sign up button. When we click our sign up button, we're going to use our global form JS to validate the input fields on our sign up page. Then we're going to open up our sign up HTML, which we created in the last video. That is in app views sign up HTML body. Here's the form that we created in our last video sign up form. We've created our input along with a error message for each of the inputs. Now we just need to create the JavaScript object to handle validating each of these input fields and displaying our hiding error messages when the user clicks on the sign up button. I'm going to begin over in our global JS sign up. Here we're going to create ourselves an object and we're going to have an initialize function. When we initialize our sign up page, we want to add an on click for our button. And our button we're targeting is our sign up button right here. Give us the name of button sign up. Target that class here in our click function. And when the user clicks on this button, we want to have a sign up function. So we're going to create a sign user up function right under our initialize function. And this is where we're going to do our form validation, which will reference our global.js form file. We have to call this initialize function on page load, which is just a function document ready called flippycoins.initialize. Now we're all set up with our on click for our button. All right, let's hop over to our global.js form, create our form object called flippycoins form. At the top here, we're going to store a few variables that contain the default class and the input default error class, which are going to come in handy when we are showing and hiding these error messages on the input fields. And we're also going to have a password min length right here of eight. So the validation will check this password min length and it will have to be at least eight characters or more. Then we're going to create our function is valid form. And this is going to take in the ID of our form. Now over in our signup JS, when we click on our button, we can call our flippy coins form dot is valid form. We're going to get our ID right from our HTML body right here. Sign up underscore form. Pass that ID into our function and we can start validating. Now before we go any further, we have to head over to our HTML body in the form and we have to add on a few data attributes here so that our JavaScript can pick up on these different input elements. We're going to add on a data attribute of type to each of these input fields. Here's the input field for email. We're going to say data type is email. This way we can determine if we're validating an email address, a password, a name, and it makes it easy to add on future data types in the future. Our username is going to get a data type of username. For the first name, it's going to get a data type of name, and so is the last name. Then our password is going to get a data type of password, and our data type for confirm password is going to be confirm password. Now over in our is form valid function, we can start validating things. We're going to start by assuming that the form is valid. Then we're going to proceed to loop over each of the form's input fields. Right here, we're targeting our form by the ID space input, which means we're going to be looping over every input element in our form. And for each input, we're going to pass that input into a function and validate it. So for each of our inputs we loop over, we're going to validate the input. Check if it's valid by creating a new function called valid input, passing in the current input element we are on. We're going to begin by assuming the input is true with the is valid input variable. Then we're going to write our if else statements for the different data types we have defined over in our HTML body. 
The first one we defined was a data type of email. The input is data type email. We're going to validate it and check if it's an email address or not. So we're going to write a function in here called isValidEmail. We're going to pass in our input element value. So whatever is entered into our input field will get passed right into our isValidEmail function. We're going to create our isValidEmail function, pass in the email, paste that complex regex in there to check for if it's an email address or not, and then return based on if it's a valid email address or not. This code is in the repository, so you don't have to sit here and type this out. So our is valid email address will return a true or false. That takes care of the email data type. Now we move on to our next data type, which is our username. Else if here, we're gonna say username. We're gonna do basically the same thing, but this time we're gonna call our is validate username function. Pass in the value from the input field. We're gonna create our is valid username function right here. Taking our username, the regex for that is just checking if it's a number, a letter, lowercase, uppercase, and an at least four characters long. Return our test of username string based off the regex we defined, and we have validated our username. After our username, we have our first and last names. So they're the same data type, so they will both fall into this else right here. Make sure that's name, and we will create a function for isValidateName. Pass in the value from the input field, and for our name, we're just gonna check if it's blank or not. You just have to have something entered in for your name, otherwise it will return false. Then we have our data type of password, which will fall into this else if right here. So we're gonna copy this line here, just like we have before, and create a new function called isValidatePassword. Pass in the value from our password input field, and let's create our isValidatePassword function. Here's where we're gonna return true or false, and we're gonna check our password min length up here. So you have coins form password min length, which is eight. So if that is greater than the current password dot length, then it's false. Otherwise our password passes our min length check. And last but not least, we have our confirm password. I'm gonna copy this line again, and we're gonna have is validate confirm password. Now for confirm password, we're gonna pass in the value, but we're also gonna pass in the value we wanna compare it to. I'm gonna target our password field that we just validated right up here. So we have the actual value for our confirm input, versus the value for our password input. So we're gonna go ahead and create that function, is validate confirm password with our confirm password and the password we're gonna check against. If it's either of them are blank, it's false. And obviously if the confirm password is not equal to password, it's false. Else, return true. Now you can see how by just adding a single data type to our input fields, we can easily loop over each input field in the form, call our validate input function, and it will fall into the correct function we need to call to validate whatever value we're looking for in that field. And if we want to add any new input field data types in the future, we just add on more if else ifs into this function right here. Now we know that the input is valid and we have to update the UI. We're going to create a function here called update input on validation. And we're going to pass in the input elements and we're going to pass in if the validation was true or false. So let's create our update input on validation function. There we go. We have our input elements and the true or false. And there's only two scenarios inside of this function, if it's valid or if it's not valid. If it's valid, first thing we want to do is remove the input error class. So we're going to remove this class from the input element. And then we want to add on the input default class onto the input element. So this ensures that every time the input field is valid, we're trying to remove the error class and adding on the default error class, making the red border go away if it's a valid input. Then we want to do the exact opposite if it's not valid. We want to do an add class of the input default error class, and we want to remove the default error class. This line right here shows the red border, and this gets rid of the white border. One other thing we want to do if there's an error is show the input error message. By default, this class is set to display none, so our input error message is always hidden. So what we're gonna do is target any siblings of the input class, which in every case, there's only gonna be one sibling, which is a div with a class of input error message. So this will show any siblings that are alongside our input element. In the same way we're showing these siblings, we also want to hide any siblings when we have a valid input. That way, if it's valid, those error messages will be hidden. And the only thing left to do now is return the value, which is true or false for our is valid input. That gets returned back to our valid input variable here in our each loop, and we want to update this form is valid accordingly. So if the input is not valid, the whole form is not valid, so we just set this to false. And then once we've looped over all the input fields, we will return our form is valid. Our form is valid gets returned to our global signup right here. What we're going to do here is we're going to wrap this in a if statement because it's just returning a true or false. If it's true, that means all the inputs were validated and returned true. Otherwise, we know at least one returned false. If all went well, here's where we're going to make an Ajax call to our server. 
that will be in the next video. Now we're going to add on our show loader here. So every time you click sign up, we're going to do flippycoins.showloader, which is also we created in a previous video. And of course, if errors happened, we want to hide the loader so the user can update the form again. Now let's true test. Let's refresh our page, flippycoin slash sign up and click sign up. Look at that. We have our input error message, which puts a border around the input and we have our error message displayed. So let's say I put in a valid first and last name, click sign up. And those two are valid now. So the red border has gone away as well as the error message. Now, if I put a valid value in for all of these things and click sign up, we should get hung up on the loader because we're going to fall into our if statement right here where the whole form is valid and we have done nothing in this if statement and the loader should just keep spinning. I've fixed the issues for each of these inputs. I'm going to click sign up and look at that. All the inputs are verified and returned true. So we see the loader. So in the next video, we will create an Ajax call to the server where we will pass along the form data and validate it server side as well. And the last thing we're going to add is just a on key up function for our enter key. If enter key is pressed on any of our inputs, we try to call our sign up function just like we do when we click the sign up button. So now we're going to see just how easy it is to add this to any form on our site. The last video we also created a login form. And our login form has two classes, an input email and an input password. And all we have to do is add on our new data type attribute, data type email, and this is a data type password. And we're copy our JS signup folder and rename it login. This is going to be login JavaScript specific stuff. Open our global login JS file. And we're going to rename this Flippy Coins signup to Flippy Coins login, our object for our login page. Then we want to target our login button. So we're going to create that login button class and on click of login button, and change this function to be called log user in. And again, we call the show loader just like on our signup page. And the only thing we have to change is the ID of our form that we're going to be validating. In this case, login form. Now it works the exact same way as our signup page. Any input field we place inside of our login form will get validated. Now we just have to make sure our login specific JavaScript file we just created gets included. So just like the head for our signup page, we're going to include our login script, JS login global JS file that we just created. Now, when the user comes here and they click login, you see a nice red border gets placed around the email and the password. So I put an email and password in, click login, we should get stuck on the loader because once again, like on the signup page, we fell into our if statement where the input fields all checked out. And in the next video is where we're gonna be making our Ajax call and doing server side security and validation. And that is going to wrap up our front end security and validation. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment down below, and let me know what you want to see coded up next. I'll catch you later.